Greetings, world. I welcome you to Life Rocks. I speak today on corrupt and corruptibility. You think about it. Let's talk about it. Mr. Ren was a bank manager in the great country of China. As manager of a safety vault, he started engaging in corrupt, addictive practices. He stole about 200,000 yuan, bought some lottery tickets, and fortunately he won and he repaid what he owed. However, the corrupt and corruptibility situation brought in the greed for more corruption and the hope for winning more. He recruited a fellow bank manager and started doing this more and more. At one point, they hauled off 6.7 million US dollars, 51 million yuan at that time, to buy more lottery tickets, but they only won about 98,000. The winnings were much, much smaller than what they needed to cover. When the police called about this discrepancy, right under the nose, the culprits began to spin a story and it was left unattended for a while, but finally it caught on. They gave them chase, they broke into two, took four million yuan each and bought cars and fake IDs and grew facial hair. But as the faces became plastered all over the country, they could not run very far. They were eventually sentenced to death and executed. The problem with corruption is it'll always catch up with you. The sentence is death. The consequences and the compensation for corruption, the wages of sin is always death. Is there a way to reverse your corruption and your corruptibility? Well, we have many anti-corruption experts. Some say you've got to redefine corruption and corruptibility. Uh, for example, instead of calling it corruption, call it clientelism. In many parts of the world, because of necessary networks to have works done and good things done and bad things accomplished, as well as gain votes, they redefine corruption as not so bad. Others talk about containment of corruption. There are whole anti-corruption summits, world bodies, which are put together. We've been at this for a long time, and every time there's a new person born, it only becomes more complex exponentially because the problem is that we are corrupt and corruptible. So, is there another way to reverse corruption and corruptibility? Well, most anti-corruption experts actually tell us that we need a strong leader and strong morals. But guess what? Strong leaders belong to the same tribe as you and myself. They too are corrupt and corruptible, unless we have a perfect leader. Strong morals, we know the principles, we know the ideals and the foundations. But we want the leaders to exceed their morality. I would like to recommend these beliefs and values as a start for the multiplication of purity across the world, integrity all across the world, honesty all across the world. It must start in the individual, otherwise it'll never be multiplied. And who's a strong leader? I'm actually going to suggest a perfect leader. He's the one who said uh, uh, in a positive way of the golden ethic, socially applied, do to others as you would have them do to you. I'm talking about Jesus the Christ. But beyond the social ethic, he went into a spiritual principle of forgiveness, of sacrifice, of love, and mercy and grace. And he went deeply further still to remove your corruption he gave himself as human savior. Beyond the social ethic, beyond deeper spiritual principles, himself as savior. By his death, he removes our corruption. And by his life, when he rose from the dead, he sends power 
the risen power for you to say yes and no to the whole problem of corruption and corruptibility. You think about it. Let's talk about it.